Today we will discuss the production possibility curve. And you know a production possibility curve we can represent using a graph or a table. The purpose of this discussion is to illustrate to you how we can use a table to explain a production possibility curve. Just to refresh your mind, a production possibility curve is where we say to one another, it is where a firm produces two products. In this example, blankets and pillows with a fixed amount of machines and labor. Looking at the table, you will see that at production A, what do we find? We have six workers that is employed by this company. And these six workers must produce blankets and pillows. So therefore, if we allocate all six workers for pillow production, it implies that we have zero workers that we allocate for the production of blankets. However, these six workers can produce 50 pillows per day. But because we have zero workers allocated for the production of blankets, we find that zero blankets is being produced. But you will find that companies want to produce more than one product simultaneously, and that basically implies then the division of labor. So at production possibility B, we say to one another, we take these six workers and we divide it now between pillows and blankets. Five workers we allocate for the production of pillows. And one worker we allocate for the production of blankets. These five workers allocated for the production of pillows, they are now able to produce 47 pillows. Reason being, we have one worker less allocated to pr the production of pillows and therefore the production of pillows decreases from 50 to 47. But this one worker, he is able to manufacture one blanket per day. At point C, we say now we take four workers and we allocate them to pillow production. And the remaining two of the six we allocate now for blanket production. These four workers, how many pillows can they now produce? Because it's less at point C as opposed to point B, we say to one another, these four workers can now produce 42 pillows. And the two workers combinedly allocated for blanket production can increase our blanket production now to two units. At point D, we divide the labor for pillow production and the labor allocated for blanket production to be equal, three and three. Therefore, with three workers being allocated to blankets, the blanket production increases to three blankets. However, the pillow production reduces then to 35 pillows because we have one worker less allocated for the production of pillows if we compare the combination C and combination D with each other. At combination E, we find now we only allocate two workers to pillow production, four workers to the blanket production, therefore blanket production increases to four, while pillow production reduces then to 20 pillows. And then lastly is where we say at point F, zero workers is allocated for pillow production, while all six is being allocated for blanket production. Therefore, my blanket production increases to six, while my pillow production decreases to zero. And therefore, you can see the PPC curve indicates to us the combination of two products, pillows and blankets, that we can manufacture with a fixed amount of inputs, in this case, labor. And as our 
quantity of labor that we allocate to the production of one product decreases, the quantity of that product which receives less labor, that output decreases as well. While in the case where we increase the number of workers allocated to blanket production, you find that the quantity of blankets also increases.